For unsecured credentials, you're looking for SSH keys and you're looking for passwords. In this scenario, we are in a Docker container. We need to find out the IP address of the Docker host. So we are 172.17.0.2. So the Docker host is 172.17.0.1. We'll try the default credentials for the Docker host. This is docker at 172.17.0.1. And Docker's password is TC user. And we're in. We can look in the C users folder. Where are we at? Home Docker, get out of there. So let's go into C because we're on the Windows box. We have administrator and all of the rest of these. So what we could do is try to look into the administrator folder and we always need to unhide hidden folders. And we have an SSH folder. So we'll CD into SSH. And we have IDRSA, which is good for us. So what we'll do is we'll cat ID RSA and copy this. We'll go into our toolbox directory and then we'll call it BIM ID RSA and then paste that, get out of there. And then we need to give it the appropriate permissions. I think it's 600 and not exploit.py ID RSA. And now we can SSH administrator at 10, 129, And then we'll use IDRSA credentials. Yes, and we are in. So we can do OMI, IP config, and type C users administrator desktop root dot text. In this example, we have a the registry key, which when enabled, you can install files in elevated context. So this is the command we're gonna run. And we see with the hex one that always install elevated is active. So we can exploit this and execute a malicious MSI payload. Now that we have our malicious MSI payload, we will start a Python server in our www folder. Once we do that, we can come back to our reverse shell and get the file. We'll see if that downloaded. It did not. Oh, just a little bit late, but it did. So now that we have that, we'll try to run. But before we run that, we need to say thank you to our web server and start a listener on 4443. Now we'll run our malicious MSI file. And we have system. So So when it comes to non-standard or non-default applications on a server or a workstation, you need to enumerate directories such as your program files, there, C program files, and go through these. If you don't know them, you need to have a list so that you know what's new or what doesn't belong. You can, you need to also look in program files x86. There's for things that don't belong as well. All of these belong on a server, give or take. And so we can continue enumerating for things. So the next directory we can enumerate is C, but we want to always Enumerated with either a dir tag force or something that's going to give us all of the folders. 
something I just forgot to do in program files, but it should be okay. So as we look here, we'll notice that we have a Ubuntu and a distros older, which are non-default. So from there, we can ascertain that Windows subsystem for Linux has been installed. Um, and we can check if that's been installed by typing the following. And we confirm that we do have WSL or Windows subsystem for Linux. So the next thing that we wanna do is enumerate this file system, which we'll do by typing this path and seeing what's in there. Actually, let's just CD into this. DIR, CD root FS. And we have several things going on here. We could check Oop. and we have a bash history. That's always interesting. And we see that we have SMB client administrator and we have credentials. So from here, we could go ahead and say new tab PS exec. Hi, set notes that is to be just set notes administrator with that password. Not the percent sign. Then we need to put quotes around that so that Linux doesn't freak out. And we say set notes that is to be. Okay, so there's connection error. We'll try again, and this time it should work. And we'll type one my IP big and type C users administrator desktop root dot text. So when you're looking through a user's groups, they look interesting. You're looking for non-default groups and groups you're not used to. And you want to get a list of groups for yourself and then compare those to what you see when you type the following command. If we look through these, all of these pretty much come up on every box relative to the operating system. But we see here we have data share, IT and AD recycle bin. Recycle bins are super duper interesting and especially the Active Directory recycle bins. So we have a command to check that As we look through the results, we get temp admin and we see that temp admin was deleted. So what we could do is enumerate temp admins properties. So the results of that command enumerate his properties. We'll see that there is a Cascade Legacy PWD, which came up previous, previously in the box as a base64 encoded password, which is awesome for us. And the password is bacteria noodles. So we'll take this. The password for temp admin got passed to the regular administrator account that is local on the box. So we'll log in with evil when I am. And then we'll run. And then, and then finally,
there it is. So with the who am I slash priv command, we need to look for elevated privileges. And if we look here, we have SC impersonate privilege as enabled, which enables a few attacks depending on your operating system. Juicy potato, you have rotten potato, and you have a few others. We're gonna use print spoofer today. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm serving print spoofer here on port 80 paste it here and then see program data print spoofer dot, dot exe and then we have print spoofer so exe i c c n d and so you see that it piggybacked off of the se personate impersonate privilege and now we are system 32 so we can type more my ip config and it's type C users administrator desktop root dot ticks. So I like to do a bonus as a thank you for watching the whole video. So this is these are my top five tips in addition to the top five that I just gave. So for number five, watch out for the privileged app. So sometimes you'll have something like Azure running or Oracle or something like that. And you need to do a quick net stat to see if those things are running or not. And when they're running, sometimes they run as a system. And if they do, sometimes they have a place where they run commands. So you could literally sometimes run your reverse shell right out of that command prompt in that privileged application. So do a net stat as soon as you get on that box and you know check that block off to make sure that nothing is running privileged on that host. For number four, I would tell you XML files are almost always interesting. XML files will contain creds. They can be just a straight up PS credential sometimes, just saved in an XML file. And you have your XML file sometimes for Active Directory as well. So if you find any XML file, save it, you know, explore it and make sure you don't let that go to waste because I'm pretty sure either that's a big clue for you or that's going to be your way in. Number three, keep a Windows VM ready. I'm going to see if I can show you mine. Mine is still loading. I'm installing Commando again on it. Keep a Windows VM ready and always be ready to run DNS Spy or DN Spy. That's actually .NET Spy, not DNS Spy. It's just something I call it. But anyway, you want to be able to take those custom applications and run them through DNS Spy. It's super simple. It gives you and it, it breaks it down and decompiles it and it gives you everything you need to know about the program. You just need to be studied up a little bit on .NET so that you're not lost in the sauce. But Yes, Commando or just a regular Windows VM, it's fine. Just be ready to do those things. Number two, I would say um, run a web server with a PowerShell reverse shell script in it, Rubyus, WinPs, PowerUp, and PowerView, and run it at all times. Don't just run it when you need it. Just run it as soon as, you, before you even start and have everything there. As you see, I don't have WinPs in here because I kind of like to find my own privs because I'm not testing, so it's, it's cool. But I get, when I would, if I were testing, I would definitely put WinPs in this folder. And I have certified here. I have Ruby is here and Chisel and Netcat. So everything's here. I even have my shell here and everything. So it's always there. It's always running. I'm not rerunning it or retrying or trying to start it up again every time I'm on a box. Everything's here. And um, this year I'm focused strictly on Windows. So I don't have any any Linux related things in there at all. So it's just another tip that I would give. And finally, I would say to run Responder in the background when you are on a Windows box. You never know what you you'll get when you run responder responder so if you run this in the background typically um, i don't know what's going on there but typically if you interact with the service sometimes you'll get an ntlm hash or ntlm2 hash back for your ntlm1 hashes uh, they are what you want if it's an ntlm v2 hash you still should try to crack it but it is less likely that you'll be able to crack that and there is another tool called ntlm x relay i think that's what it's called but if you, yeah, there, there it is. If you learn to run this script as well while you're running Responder, Responder will pass your NTLM hash to NTLM relay X dot pi and will give you a shell. So that's just, that, those things are good to know. And even if you don't, even if you're not expecting to catch a hash, just run it anyway. I mean, you never know what you can get, but it should always be running in the background when you're doing anything Windows. So I hope you enjoyed this list that I compiled. If you did enjoy it, please like and subscribe and consider donating to my Patreon. I have additional videos that I don't release to YouTube. And I also like to have discussions about 
the current state of cybersecurity and our jobs and our jobs in danger, what can we do to make ourselves better? And just looking out for everybody. So again, that's here for y'all. Check that out. Check the prices on the Patreon and see if it's right for you. If not, I just appreciate you being a subscriber. With that said, I'm gonna go get some sleep because I've been working on this for a long time. I'm Dan May. This is Unknown Artist, the Cyber Threat Division, and we out. Peace.